Awaken to hair growth. Awaken to hair growth because there is possibility to get your hair back. Awaken to hair growth because we're not told that we're able to conquer and overcome alopecia. Awaken to hair growth because I want to be a positive light and beacon for you because I've healed my alopecia and now I help others do the same. With different types of alopecia, men, women, children of all ages, of all races and ethnicities. Welcome everybody back to the Alopecia Angel podcast, Awaken to Hair Growth. I am your host, Johanna Dolman, and today we are talking about top gifts that promote health and well-being. And gifts are something that, you know, happen with birthdays, Christmas, anniversaries, and so many other celebrations. And so I like to give gifts that create health, that create well-being, that promote health all in all. And so here's a list of 14 items that would create health and that are amazing gifts that hopefully a loved one or a close person to you would enjoy. So let's start. Number one is a massage. And I love massages. I think a massage is healthy for you at any point. And some people don't like massages at all. My grandma is one of them. But some people like myself absolutely adore massages and there are different types of massages you know Swedish for a nice easy relaxing massage but then there's also Thai massage to also get you into a nice relaxed mood but then triggering those points where needed there's other options of massages all in between with hot stones and so many other aspects to it. So a massage is a great way to detoxify. It's a great way to relax. It's a great way to de-stress. I highly recommend a nice massage as a as a gift. Um, men, women uh, would definitely uh, appeal to this and would probably love it. The next idea that I have would be to give them the gift of cooking and enrolling them in cooking classes. And it could be one class. It could be you know, weekend classes, or it could be a full schedule of classes. And cooking classes can be done in person, online. They can be done with a culinary arts program, or maybe even through a community college or through a university. There are so many different options when it comes to cooking classes. And back when I was in my 20s, I actually took cooking classes at a local place called the Laguna Culinary Arts Institute. It's no longer open. They actually closed it maybe 10 years ago, back in um, back before COVID. But in any case, they had a full-fledged program for chefs. And they also taught you everything from knife skills to how to chop better, how to sear, how to roast, how to do this. And then, of course, everything when it came to pastries and sushi. And I mean, everything from A to Z in terms of cooking they taught you all and it was all taught by professional chefs. And this program was magnificent. And so as a home cook, you could take a weekend class or a weekday class or a weeknight class. And they had classes for couples and classes just for, you know, regular people who were single like myself at the time. And so I love cooking classes. I, I try to do them also abroad when I'm traveling. And I think it's a special experience that you can experience with your friend, loved one, husband, wife. Uh, even with your families, even with, you know, children, cooking classes are great. So it gets them involved in the kitchen and cooking classes. We can all sharpen, sharpen our skills so that we can be better chefs and also learn to cook more delicious meals, maybe different recipes or different ways of cooking, you know, French style, Italian, Vietnamese, Thai. There are, there's so many different uh, culinary spices to use. And fun fact, I didn't even know how to use an eggplant before taking these cooking classes. I was always perplexed by this vegetable and eggplants are delicious. I love them. And I even love Brussels sprouts, but I didn't know how to cook them. And so it's only until you are shown the way or introduced to them where you understand how to work them and, you know, incorporate them into your, into your daily life and into your family. And so this is, this is a fun way to create an experience, but also learn skills and bring this back to the house. So cooking classes are a go-to for me in terms of giving things as gifts. The next idea that I have would be a gardening class and maybe tool set. And so for those people who live in apartments, you could do, let's say, um, gardening by pots. For those of you who, who have a little more space, you can garden with like a raised bed 
and, and do that type of thing. But having like a kit would be fun to get them introduced to the world of gardening. And you can do start something with like strawberries, which is really easy. You can do that in, with containers or tomatoes, or even the, just buy them a tree, like a dwarf tree. Uh, they have specialty in, in terms of different types of trees, let's say a lemon tree, but it's dwarf. So it doesn't grow so big and it could be in a pot or it can be housed in another uh, very convenient way, but still reap the rewards of all the fruit. And so this could be a nice option for you. So a gardening class and the tools. The next idea that I have would be to do a retreat and you could do a one day retreat or a seven day retreat or a treat that's even a little bit longer. I love retreats and I love taking the time to do a retreat, even if it's like a half day retreat on a Saturday or even let's say a weekend retreat, something like this can revitalize somebody in less time. And retreat doesn't have to be yoga only, or it doesn't have to be Pilates only, or it doesn't have to be actually even physical. It can be a meditation retreat. It can be a breathing retreat. It can be so many different types of health and wellness retreats that are out there. And you can even find them on various websites where you live, or even on an Airbnb experience, or even locally through yoga instructors or through fitness centers. And they will also be offering retreats or even through a nice little search. And For those of you who are new moms, they also have retreats for moms with their babies and even for moms with their babies under the age of, let's say, three years old. I found many in Europe that were offering this. And so they offered childcare in the retreat as well, which is kind of nice because then you know that your child is in good hands and then you can also do all the activities and, you know, still have time with your child and back. And so there are many different types of retreats. And so... Like I said, they're so varied and you don't even have to travel. A lot of times they're they're local. They're local to your state, to your province, to your city, and you don't have to travel far. And so if you do want to travel and you want to go off to some exotic location, that's also available to you as well. But I love retreats and I think that's a nice, fun getaway, so to speak, mentally, physically, emotionally, and to just try something new. So even if it's just a one day, half day retreat, that's also nice too to commune with like-minded people to learn something new to just give yourself that time so i love retreats the next idea that i have is a comedy club and maybe getting tickets to a comedy club or to a comedian you know stand-up speaking uh event and i love comedy absolutely love to laugh laughing is very healthy for your for your immune system for your health and for your overall stress levels and so going to a comedy club is always Uh, a high, 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 fun, exciting event that I love to give tickets to, especially to my husband. And so um, I enjoy them. And so does he. And I think these are really fun to do together and and just uh, be able to laugh and then, you know, relive that experience later on, you know, down the road, because uh, having experiences together makes, you know, makes the most out of any relationship and bonds you and keeps you close. So going to a comedy club is is a lot of fun and it breaks the ice and it's, um, it's a good time. So why not? The next idea would be time and giving time to that person, to that loved one, to that friend, to that spouse, giving them time for what they want to do, whether that's yoga or take a nap or whether that's being kid free for the day or whether that's time with their friends or it depends, you know, who you're gifting to. But giving them the time is, is pretty huge. And as a parent myself, uh, time is, you know, precious and of the essence. And so, you know, when grandma can babysit, that's always a, a plus, but I don't always have grandma. And so this is, this is nice when I can get some time back to be able to do some fun things or some recreational things that, that are important to me too. Right. And so you might want to give them time. And I know as a kid, I remember making these, these booklets for my mom uh, or my parents, and you could write in, you know, I will do a chore or I will vacuum or I will, you know, wash the car. And it was, and it was like these little acts of kindness that, that I did as a child, you know, in elementary school, I think it was for like a mother's day gift. And in the same token or in the same vein, you can do that too. And you can gift some time or gift some acts of kindness or some acts of support. So for example, let's say if, if yeah, your spouse wants you to, to wash the car, then you'll wash the car and maybe create like a coupon book, so to speak of sorts. I think that's also a great idea of not necessarily giving your time back, but it is giving time towards an act of kindness and act of service that 
maybe they would appreciate. And so you would want to look into that. And, you know, if, if money is not an option, then you, you can give time, you can give acts of kindness, acts of service. Another idea uh, that I love is books. I love giving books. And sometimes it's that conversation that you have surrounding health, or that's that conversation you have surrounding finances, or that conversation that you have regarding what you recently read. And then it, it piques the interest of somebody, and then you can gift that book. And so we, we, we like to do this, me and my husband, we like to give books because the more education, the more learning, the better it is, right? And so giving books is fun. And if it's not books, how about an audio book? Um, I also love giving audio books as a gift as well. So for example, you can give the, not it's not Kindle, it's the Amazon uh, Audible. Audible has a um, like different packages and it, they change. So don't quote me here, but they change con consistently on the pricing and what that looks like. But you can give in the, the gift of an auto, an audible book or an audio book of your choice to a friend or to a loved one or to anyone. And so if, if this person doesn't have time to sit and read a paperback or a hardcover, well, then maybe they have time for an audiobook, which is essentially like a podcast, but it's in, sometimes it's in the author's voice and sometimes it's not, but either way, it's another way to incorporate more learning, more books into your every day. So I love giving the gift of knowledge, the gift of books. And one book I could always recommend is The Secrets to Health and Hair Growth by yours truly or alopecia in general. So I would have uh, highly encourage you to pick that up for a loved one as well or for a friend in need. Technology tools. So technology can can vary through muscle massage, pain reliever, guns to different types of, of tech gadgets and widgets that can help you amplify your health initiatives help you, you know, optimize your health. And there's many gadgets out there that are worth your time and money and many gadgets that are not worth your time and money. So it's deciphering which ones are good and which ones are not good. I have tested many, but not all. And so for example, when it comes to alopecia, the laser caps, the hair, skin and nail supplements, all those don't work. Also the PRP doesn't work. And so there's a lot of gimmicks that don't work. Like they wouldn't work for alopecia, like they wouldn't work for just for upping or boosting your health. And so sometimes getting that evaluation, getting that consultation is also important so that you can understand and see, you know, where you're at, at, at the baseline and go from there. So technology and their tools can be very helpful. There's uh, many apps that I find very helpful, but there's others that are not so helpful. And so it's also doing your research and deciphering which ones are great and which ones would be useful for your loved one in need. Another idea would be robe and slippers. And you can not use robe and slippers at any point, you know, for summer, fall, winter, or spring. And they're nice and comfortable. They, they're, they're very healthy for you and also comfortable. And so I love just a nice, pair of robe and slippers when it comes to travel and for those that you love who travel a lot there's many things you can do from the eye mask to luggage to white noise to so many aspects of traveling and healthy travel that you can do and recently I purchased a lunchbox so that I, I can take my own food to go in a nice healthy stainless steel lunchbox and this way I don't have to eat airplane food and I can, you know, snack on healthy snacks and, and this type of thing. And so it buffers, uh, you know, any meals. I try to take my meals before I, I fly and have a nice window so that I don't have to eat any airplane food. And then also taking snacks. Uh, snacks are important when traveling. And so maybe a nice lunchbox would be great. And there are very adult looking lunchbox. Like there are a lot of kid option kid-friendly option lunch boxes, but there's many things when it comes to travel and healthy travel that, I mean, there's just infinite, uh, infinite amount of options. And last but not least, I would say, give the gift of true health. And that comes from the hair and heal program. And I absolutely love it because you, it keeps growing and expanding on topics, but then also it sets the tone and it sets the foundation, not just for your hair health, and your hair growth, but then also for optimal health for the rest of your life. And these are keys to success that I live and breathe and that I use on a daily basis. But then also it trickles down into my children. It trickles down to my husband. It trickles down into my family and into my extended family. And, you know, it's knowledge is power. And then when you can implement, it's even more. 
it's, it compounds even more. And so, for example, now that I'm at a different stage of life, yes, I've healed my alopecia. And yes, I focus on hair and health and optimization of health. But at the same time, there's so many ways and so many more avenues and routes and roads that we can take towards this. And just like you see a specialist for a dermatology and cancer and, you know, your feet and your knees and your ear, nose and throat and how you have all these different specialists, there's different areas too of, of health that I'm looking at to ensure that I age, not just gracefully, but to the best of my ability so that when I am 90, I look and feel like I'm 30 and you know, that's the key without having to do Botox, without having to use fillers, without having to cut corners and take shortcuts. Because a lot of times the shortcuts that we think are going to help us don't help us. And they actually, you know, decline our health in a big way. And, you know, when you start looking at everything that creates health, we have to almost eliminate many things because we thought that they were healthy and now they're not. And so things like smoking, creates bad health, but also hair loss. Uh, there are many pharmaceuticals that create hair loss and bad health. There are many surgeries like breast implants that create bad health on the long run. You know, breast implants should not be in you for long term. And it's only now that we're seeing the negative side effects to these foreign entities inside our bodies. And so the list goes on and on of what we think are maybe neutral or you know, doesn't harm us. And then yet later on in life, we do realize that they harm us. And so these are things to to look at to consider. But all in all, there are many, many options when it comes to giving the gift of health. And knowledge is one of them experiences are another tools are, are another. And then of course, you know, getting them evaluated, and then maybe doing things together, it makes it even more special. So I hope this helps you with any festivities and celebrations and gift giving ideas for your loved ones. I look forward to speaking to you on the next podcast. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Alopecia Angel podcast, a positive light in healing alopecia. You can do this and we can help. Spread the word that reversing alopecia is possible by telling your friends and family.